Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a custom autocomplete search feature that works something like this. I can select my input, start typing in partial word, full word, whatever it might be, and I'm automatically getting results back. And the way that the results look, I can customize um, that layout and that design however I want. We're going to be using a plugin combined with a couple of elements to really create a custom feature. And you can take this in a lot of different directions so that it works exactly right for your app. This is something that a lot of people have been asking me how to do. So I'll take you through how this works. I'm going to show you how to do this feature in a few different steps, with each step giving you a little bit more customization in how the behavior works. But uh, at the base level, you should be able to accomplish this uh, in just the first couple steps. So the first thing we need is an input element, and I'm going to make it pretty wide here. Um, and I'm just going to make it an even, let's do 600 pixels wide. This is going to be my main search bar. Uh, we'll just give it a placeholder, type to search. Okay, and the next thing I'm going to do is add a group focus element. A group focus basically attaches itself to um, some other element in the page. So you see that how when I added it, um, it just kind of jumped to the upper left corner. What I need to do is give it a reference element, and the reference element is going to be our input here. I'm just going to make this white. I'm also going to make my input white so that I can see it a little bit better here. Um, and then also give this one a border down here. All right. Uh, now the group focus, I'm also going to make it the same width as the input, so also 600 pixels wide, just so that it looks like it's fully coming down from the input and it's kind of part of the same element. Now the group focus, again, is a hidden group that has to be shown via a workflow. Um, to hide it, though, you can click anywhere outside of the group um, and it'll go away on its own. But to show it, it must be done in a workflow, and I'm going to get to that in a second. So inside of this group, I'm going to add a repeating group. This is where we're going to display our list of results. So I'm just going to center this here. Uh, actually, I'll make it uh, as wide as our group so that it snaps there. And this is the part where you can really design how these uh, results and this list in general looks overall. So I'm just going to do a basic design where we're going to see um, four uh, rows, no matter what, by default. Uh, you could also set it to full list so that it only displays the number of rows that come back in the results. But I'm going to keep this um, simple and just set it to vertical scrolling, four rows at a time. Uh, I'm going to change this to a solid line and bring down the border color a little bit there so it's a little bit more subtle. So our repeating group, what I'm going to do for this search is just a general search for users. So the type of content will be user. And my data source is going to be a search for users where any field here contains whatever was typed into this input element here. So as long as the user's name, description, whatever text field you have under the user record, if it matches uh, whatever was typed into here, it'll come back as a result. So I'm going to do any field contains the input, this input's um, value. Now if we look really quick at my user type, uh, we're going to be matching against first name, last name, phone number, and username because these are all text uh, field values there. Now I need to design my repeating group a little bit so that I can actually see something when the result comes back. I'm going to do an image element to see the user's profile photo. So I'll add an image element there and this will be the current sales user's photo. This is going to be the dynamic image. And then I'm just going to have a um, text element to display the current sales user's first name. I'll add a space and then do current sales user's last name. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger too. And bold it. Okay. Cool. So again, you can design this however you want. You can have much more information inside the cell if you'd like. You could even have a button inside the cell so that when the result comes back, they can click on the button to take them to, to take the user to like the profile page for this user. Um, that's a little bit beyond this tutorial, but just kind of pointing out that this is a repeating group like any other, so you can do whatever you'd like inside the cell there. 
the important thing is that this repeating group is inside of our group focus. So if we were to preview the page right now, all we'll see at the moment is just our um, input element where we can start typing, but we haven't programmed the group focus to be shown uh, for any reason. So I can type, but nothing's really going to happen quite yet. So let's have some trigger to show the group focus. I'm going to add an icon and just stick it here to the right of our input. I'm going to change it to a little magnifying glass like this. All right. And this icon, when clicked, will show the group focus element so that we can then see the repeating group um, returning our searches with this constraint. We will already have a value in the input, so really we just need to show the element. So I will start edit workflow off of this icon. Okay, when this icon is clicked, we're going to element actions, then show group focus. Okay, so I'm going to preview the, the page to see what this is doing so far. All right, so I'm going to type in the name Geller and click on my magnifying glass and we can see that my users have filtered to these two users who have the same last name that matches my um, input there. I can type in a different name and uh, it will return here. And actually, when because the group focus is already being shown and the um, data source is set up to apply constraints with whatever's typed in, I actually, now that it's visible, I don't have to keep hitting the search icon to show it again because the repeating group is automatically changing and all of the icon is doing is showing the element. It's not actually connected to the data source for the repeating group. So if I just start typing and I'm not clicking anything or um, hitting enter or anything. Let's see, that might not have a value in my user database. So I just typed that in and this result came back because the repeating group's data source changed. The constraint is different now. I have a different value so it's able to change up the list um, of users that comes back. And if I clear this out, um, it will return all users because I don't have anything to constrain it by, so they're all able to come back. Now, the uh, way that you filter your users, that's going to be up to you and how it works best with your app. You can make it so that if this input is empty, to not show any results here. If you don't want to see anything, there has to be a value in order to show anything. Now, let's take this one step further and give this entire behavior a little bit more of an autocomplete um, reaction. So if I start typing in G-E-L-L -L like that, I actually see the users showing up for whoever's matching even a partial word like this, because right now we're not seeing that happen. In order to do this, we're going to install a plugin. We're going to use the search and autocorrect plugin here, this one right there. I'm going to install this is uh, built by a third party plugin developer. Once you install that plugin, you're going to see the search and autocorrect element become available in your visual elements list. So I'm going to select that and just add this element to the page. This is actually an invisible element that's just needed to be on the page so that it can um, run the behavior in the background. The way that we're going to set this up is very similar to how you set up your repeating group. The search is not going to happen in the repeating group anymore. Instead, we're actually moving it over to this element to handle the search and provide real-time um, match results. So the data type will be user, the data source will be a search for users, and I'm not going to add a constraint here. Instead, this plugin lets me define which fields I want to search. So I can say, great, I want the first name to be looked at, the last name, the username. We can also do the phone number if we want. These are all text fields. So as long as whatever I type in here is found within these fields, the plugin will uh, bring back those users as a result in the list. I do have to tell the plugin which input to look at because if I have multiple inputs on the page, it's not going to know which is which. So on the input, I'm going to scroll to the very bottom and give it an ID attribute. And I'm just going to give it the name search like that. If you don't see this ID attribute field here, 
go into your settings and then general section of your settings. And if you scroll down just a little bit under general appearance, you'll see this option here, expose the option to add an ID attribute. Just make sure that is checked. And that will uh, bring the ID attribute field up for you. Okay, so I've given the, the input an ID attribute. I will go back to the plugin and say, all right, this is the input that I want you to look at. So just type in that same name um, so it can connect itself to that input. The rest of the uh, options you can play around with on your own. It gives you a little bit more uh, control over how accurate you want the results to be. And we can't forget to check this box here so that um, the plugin knows that we're actually looking at an input on the page and not something that we're typing in directly into this field because if you wanted, you could have um, some dynamic expression that you wanted to match or a static, even a static value. So just make sure that this checkbox is checked. And then the last step for setting up the plugin is in your repeating group, we're going to remove this regular search as the data source and replace it with the search and autocorrect, this is the plugin, search and autocorrects matches. Okay, so this plugin will generate this, it'll, it'll perform the search and generate the results, and we will display those matches in the repeating group. That's now the new data source. Okay, so now I'm going to preview the behavior. I'm just going to type in a name, click my magnifying glass, and I can see the results are coming back in the way that I want. If I change to G-E-L-L, -L, see how um, I'm already getting results back. I don't have to wait until I complete um, typing out a full word and clicking out of the input. It's kind of auto-responding, so I can type in M-O-N and I get Monica there. If I type in G-E, I get um, the top matching uh, users or the closest matching to here. Um, those settings in the plugin will actually let you tighten up how closely the match has to be. As another example, I can type in B-I-N and these users come back because they have those letters in their names. And now we have our autocomplete uh, function built in here. One last piece of this is to automatically show the group focus as soon as you've clicked into the input. Because right now, if I were to type in a name, nothing shows up until I click that icon to display the group focus. You might be more comfortable with search features where it automatically shows that group as soon as you start typing in here. So what we're gonna do is have the group focus be visible as soon as the input is focused which means basically if you've clicked into it and see how it's highlighted here, it's ready to accept a value, you can start typing away. So if I go into my workflows, I can add an event, do when condition is true, okay? And this is gonna run every single time. Basically we want to, let me add the action here, we want to show the group focus, and we only want this to happen when the input here is focused, but we have a little problem here. The focus state is not available to us as an option for this condition. So how do we get around that? This is a little hack. So I'm going to add a shape element to be like the communicator between, uh, to know whether the input is focused or not and to let the workflow know as well. So this shape, um, I'm going to give it a condition when the input is focused, so here we have it available to us, then this shape will be visible. Okay, and by default, it's not going to be visible. So it goes away there. I'm just gonna pull it back so that we can see it. But um, on page load, this is not set to be visible. In the conditions, when the input is focused, it will be visible. We're doing this because you can see that the only options available to us here from this conditional area is its visibility is visibility properties for elements. So here, I'm going to switch this over to only when the shape is visible. Okay, so every single time the shape element becomes visible, we're going to show the group focus and the shape will only be visible when the input is focused. Okay, so I'm gonna preview the page now. All right, so as soon as I click into the input, I don't even have to type anything. Our shape becomes visible, 
which in turn triggers the group focus to show. Now, of course, you want to make the shape uh, transparent. You don't really want to see a background color of anything because you don't want the user to see that. But I'm just having it visible here so that we can see each step of the way. But now that it's um, opened up the group focus, I can start typing and see my autocomplete results come back. And the behavior is a lot more comfortable feeling. The user doesn't have as many clicks to go through to see their results. Also keep in mind that you can hit the tab key to set focus to the input, just like you would on any form that you work with online. Um, you can tab through inputs with your keyboard that way. It works here as well, so you don't even have to click into the input. If that's something that uh, might feel a little bit more natural for your users, that will also um, respond very well uh, in your application. And that's pretty much it. You can take this in so many directions to create a really powerful autocomplete search feature for your app. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to the channel to get updated whenever there is a new tutorial. Thanks so much for watching.